In this video, I'll cover some basic configuration files for the system and for the user. In some of the other videos, I've mentioned the 9FAT partition. First, I'll go over the boot configuration files located there. Those control the options that you see in this screen when booting the system. And depending on how your BIOS handles booting, you may get this graphical style boot screen, or you may get a plain black screen with white text. Uh, but the option for the boot drive and the user will be the same. All right, first we need to mount the 9FAT partition. There's a script called 9FS that we can use to run that. And that will automatically mount it in the slash n directory. And there's all our boot files. On um, this particular system running 9front, the file called 9PC64 is the kernel. It's for 64-bit Intel and AMD CPUs. If you run 9front on a Raspberry Pi, the kernel will be called 9Pi 2, 3, or 4. Uh, the Pis have a few other differences, and I'll cover that in another video. Um, the legacy Plan 9 systems will still have separate kernels for terminals and CPUs, even if they're running on the same CPU. Uh, if you want to compile your own kernel, this is where you will put it. And uh, the main thing you want to play with here is the plan9.ini file. So let's look at that. All right, we can see it specifies the kernel we're going to boot, the location of the file system, and any arguments we want to pass to it. So this is where it'll specify the amount of RAM that the cache for the file system will use. Here's the settings for the mouse, the monitor, and 9front has added the option to tilt the screen so you can have it in portrait mode instead of landscape if you want. And there's also a man page for plan9.ini. So there's a lot of different options for setting up your networking ahead of time if you need extra stuff for that. All kinds of things. So there's a couple I'm interested in that'll make this a little bit easier. Here we go. For starting. So instead of boot args, where it'll stop and ask you to enter to accept what you have, you can do no boot prompt, and that will just automatically do it. Uh, the other is, instead of asking me to hit enter to accept the user, it can just, we can put an automatic user in there. So let's go ahead and edit this. Actually first, I'm going to make a copy of it in case I want to use the old one. And I'll use Sam to edit it. So we'll change this option. And we want this no boot prompt. Ah, trying to get it to select here. There it goes. All right. 
And then we need to add an option for user equals Glenda. That should be it. All right, I will W to write. Oops, wrong space up here. And Q to quit. All right, and then we'll reboot the system to see if that worked. Oh, there we go. You can see it automatically accepted the file system and it didn't ask us for the user. And it still seems to hang on the network configuration, but that might just be my router not playing nice with the system. And there we go. It now boots without any sort of user intervention. All right, the next configuration file to look at is the user's profile file. Uh, this is in the user's lib directory. So I'm going to change directory lib. And there's profile. As I mentioned before, slash bin is an empty directory. At start, the system does a bunch of binding to put stuff in it, and this is part of it. So in the user's home directory, there is uh, bins for CPU type and scripts. So a user can put their own programs in their home directory instead of anywhere else on the hard drive. And those will automatically get mounted to bin at startup. Uh, you can see there's a couple different options here. The case for running as a terminal, running as a CPU server, or on a bare console. Uh, the standalone system is treated as a terminal, so that's the only ones we'll look at here. Uh, web cookies and WebFS are for needed for the web browser. Uh, plumber invokes the plumber. These options here just echo some words into the mouse control device. So Plan 9 likes to have everything exposed as files, so if you want to change your mouse acceleration and stuff, you just literally echo strings of text into the mouse device. Uh, this one here sets what the prompt looks like. So this is term with a percent sign, which is why the terminal prompt looks like that. And the last one here starts the Rio uh, windowing system. And you can see it adds a little extra option here, this I slash Rio start. So, I've mentioned before that if you want the windows to automatically scroll at start, like all the time, you can add an S to this option here. Just, and then save that. I mean, open it in a text editor and do it, but that's what it would look like. You'd put a dash S in there um, to have scrolling set as the default in uh, all your real windows. So Rio start is a shell script and it lives in the user shell script directory. So let's go back there. And it'll be the RC directory for RC scripts. And there's Rio start. So Rio start is a shell script. You can tell by the little shebang here. And if you ever wondered why you get a the little stats thing and a empty window at startup, uh, this is what does it. So that window here basically calls the window, tells it where to go, like the coordinates for it, and what program to run. And an empty window will, like this one here is your terminal one, it'll just automatically start a terminal so they don't have to put anything other than the size. So if you want to add some things, this is where you'd do it. So let's say I wanted a 
a little clock up here by Rio every time. Just like that. There's a handy little script called wlock, which will put out the windows, their coordinates, and what's running in them. And it shows it just like Rio Start uses them. So if I want this clock, I can copy it. And uh, let's use Acme this time. Open Rio Start. And let's go ahead and paste and put to save it. And we can test this without reloading the system by just running Rio inside another window. So run Rio I oops, Rio start. And now we get a little clock every time. The last configuration file worth noting is termrc. And that's going to be in the main script directory. So under slash rc slash bin A surprising number of uh, Plan 9 programs are actually just shell scripts. Um, since so much can be done by just reading and writing to files, things that other operating systems might require compiled code for system calls can just be done with standard open, read, write, close file utilities. Uh, the script we're looking for is termrc. There it is. So this is the script that uh, gets run every time you Start your computer up. So as I talked about in the video covering namespaces, uh, much of what looks like the file system is built out of a bunch of different things. And termrc does this for a standard terminal configuration. Uh, we can see that it, right here it adds a bunch of devices, uh, mounts the slash n, slash mnt, uh, Factotum does uh, passwords and stuff. Um, we got the USB listener and a bunch of other things. So there's one of the options in here is a fun one is machine specific startup for devices not probed. Um, if you want to have extra stuff to add to your startup, you could go into the slash CFG directory and put in the name of your system. So in this case, it would be demo with a capital D and then another file in there called term RC. And you can run uh, extra scripts specifically for that system. Uh, this is really handy if you're using a Raspberry Pi because they don't have a built-in clock. So what you can do is you, you know, name your Pi, you go into slash CFG, make a directory for the name of your Pi, and then add a term RC file. And you can add an option to go fetch the time from a time server. So that way your Pi can always boot up with the current time. Um, so that's basically the only thing you might at this stage be using the term RC for, but it's good to know. So that's about it for now. Uh, much of the other configuration options don't come up until you are running a multi-user and multi-computer plan nine network. 
Uh, in the next bunch of videos, I'll be setting up a Plan 9 file server using 9Front, and uh, I'll start expanding the network. So stay tuned for that, and have fun.